Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of uh, Prophetic Company Online. Uh, Andrew Walker here, I'm here with Wendell McGowan, and um, we're happy to see and hang with you guys again tonight, and we're going to talk about some amazing prophetic things, and we wanted to uh, just give you a heads up to buy this book, Prophetic Company, uh, by Dan McCollum. We're selling them here at, at the church, so you can come down on a Tuesday night or Sunday morning. We've got these available for you. And we're going to start doing something new with this. Wendell, what are we going to do new on Tuesday nights? Well... Uh, just to give a little history, we got this book because three years ago, it's been over three years ago, mm -hmm. you had asked me to do a couple of weeks teaching on the prophetic, mm -hmm. and I had been invited to go to a round table up in Vacaville, California with a bunch of prophets from across the planet, and my friend Dan McCullen, who we've been friends for 25 years, had just written this book, and he gave it to me and started talking about it. When I picked it up, I was just blown away. Mm -hmm. Because I knew that's what we had to do here. We had to build a prophetic company. Amen. It wasn't just a prophetic, I'm going to call it Holy Ghost goosebump, but but biblical foundations to build a culture mm. of a prophetic company. So we got this book three years ago and taught it. Well, we're starting it again. We're, we're reteaching it. And honestly, I'm reading the book again. I'm like, man, I didn't see that the first time I read yeah, that book. Right, right. And, and we're going to have a lot of us sharing in viewpoints of each chapter as we teach this school and it's going to be we're going to call it a regular school this time mm -hmm. a prophetic school mm -hmm. prophetic company school and at the end if, if you go through the material we're going to issue uh, diplomas of 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 uh, honor to those who go through the class so we're going to do that and if you don't want to and if you're in another city or whatever um, you know, we're we're gonna. I, I just want to bless people, and they cost a little bit more this time. But we're gonna sell these for twelve bucks, and you can get it on Amazon for fifteen, mm -hmm. which is still a good deal. And it's free shipping. So, if you come to church and get them here, or you can get them online. So that's what we're about to do. Yeah, this is a prophetic company, uh, Dan McCollum. So you know, just take a look at that. Look at it. Even like like Wendell said, we have them available here, twelve bucks or fifteen bucks on Amazon. If you want to do it. Yeah, uh, buy it on Amazon, and and you'll see that cover. So anyway, and, awesome and Dan, Dan's awesome probably one of the greatest prophetic equippers yeah. I've ever met. Dan's amazing. Oh man, I mean, really uh, you, you know, we've been like I said, the first time I met Dan, I laid hands on him, and he was out on the floor laughing yeah. for almost two and a half yeah. hours. Yeah, but then to see what happened with him and the prophetic, I mean, he's got insights on the prophetic like I've not heard from anyone. Hmm. So this is really a great foundational book. And, and honestly, it'll bless you. If you're prophetic, you want to learn more. See, we've had too many prophets that's been one-man dog and pony shows. Mm -hmm. and, and our heart here is to build teams. Yeah. And if you look at the Scripture, and it's, it's laid out very clearly in the book that, that every time God was moving, whenever time he was changing uh, a, a season, it was always through a prophetic company. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just one man. We always have been taught it was one man like Elijah or Elisha. Truth was, Elisha couldn't get her done. He did a few things, mm -hmm. but it was Elisha mm -hmm. who went after the, the 7,000 prophets, the school of the prophets, and what this is this is what this is based on, mm -hmm. was, was seeing Elisha that got him and activated him, and they changed the whole nation. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what we're after. We're, we're, we're after changing our nation. We're not going to allow, you know, a, a, a religious devil, a political devil, mm -hmm. any devil again to seize the church. When we get prophetic companies up, mm -hmm. they're warriors. Amen. They're going to push back. Amen. And they're going to have the word of the Lord and the wisdom on how to take the land. So that's why we're doing this. And prayerfully, you'll be blessed by it. And this is why we do these little yeah. blogs. Yeah. We're trying to give you little, yeah. little pieces of prophetic uh, it, wisdom so that you can begin to stand. But our whole our whole deal is if you are seen to be alone, write us. We, we want to partner with you. Yeah, and, uh, for sure. So and this will be, the you know, this book and, and the school will be happening Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Here at Dunamis at 7 p.m. So yeah. come if you want to be part of the school. In Las Vegas. Yeah, that we're in Las Vegas. That's yes, right. baby. <laughs> so anyway, uh, tonight, listen, we want to talk about character. Uh, in the prophetic and, and in ministry, in the prophetic ministry, um, and in, in just in life in general, you know, just being a prophetic person, no matter which area of the prophetic you're called to or the, um, you know, the calling of that gift in you to whatever area it will rise to, 
you know, character is extremely important. And um, character is going to be developed in you. If you're surrendered to the Lord, it's going to happen. And there's really nothing you can do about it except say no. But if you're surrendered to God, character development is going to happen. And it's going to be challenging, especially if you're a prophet, or even one who's been a call prophet, because chances are you've been terribly rejected, wounded, misunderstood. And our whole objective is to get you whole and let you know that all of that was unto something. I had a right. friend who went on to be with Jesus, and whenever you'd talk with him, I'd always say, this is unto something. Mm. And I'm going to tell you, this prophetic anointing and this prophetic company is unto something. It's to take Amen. the kingdom. That's mm. what we're after. So, you know, I just want to encourage you, you know, I mean, prophets have just been ravaged. That's why there's been such a famine, though we're in a new day, mm -hmm. to where there's a lot of prophetic, thank God for great movements, my friend Bill Johnson and, and Morningstar and many other movements. They begin to fill the, fill the land with prophetic people, some with maybe different styles, we're, we we have a different approach maybe than others, but we're going to see this This is a new day of God restoring a strong foundation of prophetic to the church. Amen. Amen, amen. We're going to start tonight by talking about uh, character and five uh, aspects uh, to character, five things um, that is going to be developed in your character, especially as a prophetic person or as a prophet. Um, and so the very first one that we want to talk about tonight and is courtesy, uh, the character development of courtesy, in which is, in other terms, honor. Honor. Courtesy is really honor. You can't be, you know, gracious and kind to someone unless you have honor for them. Hmm. So the first character a prophet's got to establish is honor. Why? Because you've probably been dishonored like you sure. never could imagine when you stepped into yeah. it. I was a good little Baptist boy, minding my own business. Everybody had clapped because they said you're an evangelist. Well, I had a little bit of evangelist, but every prophet's an evangelist. Mm. Every prophet's got an evangelistic anointing. But if, you're, if your theology and doctrine don't give room for it, well, you get stuck there. Mm -hmm. and, and then when you start to move into prophetic, then you get rejected. People say, well, you can't do that. Are you prideful? You're telling me things yeah, right. that, I, that, that I don't know and all this stuff. But, but I'm telling you, prophets have been wounded, and that's why honor, I think, is the first character mm -hmm. gift that we've got to develop. You've got to get a spirit of forgiveness and grace for people who have hurt you. Now, trust me, mm -hmm. <laughs> I've, I've, I've got a few licks along the way, yep. and, uh, but, but you know what? I feel honored that the Lord has trusted me Amen. to be Amen. able to walk through it. And now I can encourage and help a lot of other people come in a new day. So honor is really the first thing that I think God develops in us. And you need to start with the spirit of forgiveness. Anybody who's wounded you, anyone who's misunderstood you, particularly leaders, mm. leaders who feel threatened. If you've got a strong gift, prophetic, usually most prophets, many prophets are very strong individuals in sure. their personality. And there's some that's quiet and they're just as powerful. But when you get a strong character prophet, then the people that you serve always feel threatened because they think that you're trying to take the position. But a mature prophet knows they're only there to lay a foundation. They're building in the cornerstone. Right. Yeah, yeah, they are a foundation that everything builds upon. And they are dependent on an apostolic leader or a bishop or a elder, or any other term you want to call. We call them pastors in America because we haven't had prophets for so long. Mm. But the truth is, we've got to partner together so that we can build a strong house, and everything's built on the apostle and the prophet, the Scripture says. That's right. So, Amen. you know, without character, you'll not want to stand and take the weight of everyone kind of resting on you, mm. standing on you. You won't, you won't stand there. Right. You'll say, rain on you, man. I've been beat up enough. Right. You know? And, and I mean, sometimes you, you sometimes you get broken, and then you get broken. Mm. And, and I never like to hear messages of being broken. I'm a pretty positive dude, man. When they'd ask for people to come and pray for a spirit of brokenness, I wasn't getting in that line. <laughs> but, but you know what? God knows how to break us. Because mm. a broken and contrite spirit, he will not despise. Mm. Amen. And a prophet, it's important that you understand that word. If you don't stand on the word, you got trouble. 
So honor is the first thing. And, and um, so you, you got any comment on that? No, I think that was good. I think you explained all of it. The only thing I was going to ask you answered already. So I think that's good. The honor is something that you, you've got to develop. It just has to happen. It's a choice. And, yeah. And there's no fear in honor. When you choose to honor somebody else, no fear in it whatsoever. And all fear, you, you can't honor people and be afraid at the same time. It, it, and let me just put this balance to it. I mean, if you're in a culture, once you honor, and it seems as if no one's breaking through, you need to appeal to the Lord because you might be in the wrong culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm just kind of balancing that. Mm -hmm. Now I've, I've been, I've chosen, I had to because of, you know, I've been after this thing for over 30 years and, and there wasn't a whole lot of prophetic people and I didn't even know what, what that was. Yeah, right. But, but the truth was, you know, you could tell there's people that just get it a little bit at a time. They still want to kind of reject it and you know, if you're going to receive it and there's other places you go, they don't want no part of it. Well, I'm, I'm just going to say you, you inquire of the Lord. And then you connect with, find a good counsel, find a good prophetic apostolic counsel mm -hmm. to get wisdom, whether you're supposed to find another culture, another body, whatever it is, mm -hmm. or just to stay because God knows what he's up to. And it may be that you're just right on the doorway of breakthrough. But I want to say that for people to get frustrated and think they got to keep, if you continue to get beat up, if you're, if you're not getting celebrated, right, <laughs> rather than tolerated, yeah. Uh, then, then probably you, you're either going to break through to where you're celebrated or you need to go somewhere else where you are celebrated. Yeah. An abusive relationship is no relationship at all. No. So it's not a good or healthy place to be. And that's honor. The second thing characteristic we want to talk about uh, prophetically is worship. And, and the second character builder, see, worship. So Some guys think because they're a prop, you know, one of the first, we're going to be teaching this in our school, and uh, again, we're going to we're going to certify people who go through our school. One, you know, two or three different levels. We're going to certify people. But but you know, David is when you look at scripture. And most of you's never thought about this, but David's power was a prophetic company of worship. Hmm. He was a worshipper. Yeah. And what did he do? He gathered the worshipers together. Um, again, you can even go back to to Moses. He had a prophetic company. Hmm. What did, how did he defeat the enemies? His sister Miriam worshipped to break the power of the enemy. It was Amen. a prophetic company. Amen. I mean, I've never seen or even thought about that, but I'm realizing that, yeah, there's a voice, a leader, who will blow the trumpet, but he always will gather a team or a company mm -hmm. or a culture for a breakthrough. Amen. So worship is... If you're not a worship, you see, see, here's what the devil does, and this is what the enemy does to you if you're a prophet. He tries to give you so much heartache that you can't get the joy of the Lord mm. to be your strength because worship is dependent on your joy. Amen. Yeah. Maybe not by an emotional connection, but by uh, 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 a choice. Mm -hmm. For the joy of the Lord is my strength, the Scripture says. Amen. So I, I just feel like you know worship's got to be a part, and if you're not worshiping, Again, most, most prophets are worshipers mm -hmm. that I've seen. Most of them are pretty radical worshipers. Yeah. David was a prophetic worshiper. Uh, though he was a priest and a king, he was a prophetic worshiper mm -hmm. who was building a culture of a prophetic company. So, Amen. you got anything else to add on that? No, I think that's great. Worship, man. I mean, it's, it's just super important. And, and if, if you can't worship, then you need to get around some other people. That's why the team is important. You know, we're really emphasizing here at Dunamis mm -hmm. about teams. Yeah. yeah, we got leaders. Mm -hmm. We're not we're not a free for all. Anybody just can't say, "Hey, I got the card today. I'm going to preach." No, we've got a protocol of people and an authority, but it's not a, a hierarchy. Right. And and uh, so, you know, when your worship gets challenged, your gift gets squelched. Mm -hmm. And when you're a worshiper, then it's amazing. Uh, you know what? Most of the heavy revelation I get, you know where I get it? Right mm -hmm. in the middle of worship. Yeah. I, I'll be in the middle. I, mean, I, I have invariably. seen that with me too. I mean, and and you pick right. it up. See, yeah. I'm, I'm so thrilled to be partnered with you because you're the first guy since another prophet I was partnered with a long time ago kind of knew where I was. and what yeah. I, was, I don't have to say anything, just like suddenly. <laughs> I was sitting there saying, well, I got a word, but I'll wait to see yeah. if Andrew. And you got it. And yeah, you yeah. do that almost every time. Yeah. Yep. That's a part about a team and hearing God, mm -hmm. hearing God and trusting the people you're with. So, um, you know, worship, if we don't have an atmosphere of worship or we can't be in a place to where we can just, 
get all the what I call the road dust off of us, mm -hmm. the 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 garbage that people put on us, the enemies put on us. Right. Worship is how you get that taken care of. So the second part character is worship. Amen. The third one we want to talk about, Wendell, is hospitality. And hospitality. Hospitality. That means service. Hmm. A prophet, if you get in such a place, though you may have a powerful, powerful gift, and you don't think you can serve the people, hmm. you get so far in an anointing, quote, that you quit ministering to the people that's been in the ditch. Right. I call people that's coming up for prayer when they get exposed to the prophetic Samaritans. Mm. They got a true legal right to receive a kingdom, uh, I'm going to call it destiny. Mm -hmm. But if you, as, as you know, and we see that story uh, of the hierarchy of the church walk by him with the good Samaritan mm. gave right. him oil. Right. Well, every prophet should be a good Samaritan, have a spirit of hospitality. Minister to people where they are. Minister to their That's needs. Uh, you know, you never get on the other side of it. So, yeah. Uh, if you're a prophet in the church and you don't minister to the people that just come every Sunday, that's what Wendell's talking about. There gets some some prophets you'll see they get to this. They they feel like they've gotten this level where doing what the Bible says, which is to equip the saints, they are somehow above that. But that's just not true. It doesn't matter what level of prophet you think that you are, or even that you are. Our job is to equip the saints and that means prophesying over everybody whether they're there for the first time they've been there for years it doesn't matter as we're led by the spirit we should be available and hospitable to everyone no matter what yeah when i was a young prophetic person raising up a lot of old prophets would say well you can't really prophesy to people you know i said i don't think that's true right fact is i think that's just dead wrong it is now you're not going to be prophesying to your family when you're all around them. Sometimes people get so screwball <laughs> that they think we're going to prophesy. You prophesy to your family. They're way ahead. No, you, you, you're, a hu you're in your humanity. And unless God reveals it to you, then you minister to them. But the truth is you can minister to people that you know. You'll hear things that they haven't heard. And it's not about you know, have an inside information. God will give you things. And that's what we see here. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's amazing here. How yeah. many people prophesy yeah, and, and, and keep getting words yeah. and they keep getting more uh, a sense of destiny, get mm -hmm. more of a sense of God's intentions for you. And that, that's what I think that prophetic culture is about. It's not about the one man, the one man. Mm -hmm. See, our, our church has been weak in the past. We've let a government political system Shut down the church because you got one man making the decision mm. when it needs to be a team. Right. And if you got a church full of prophetic people, you got a church full of warriors. Amen. And warriors aren't called to lay down and hide. That's right. Amen. They're supposed Amen. to rise up and take the land. Amen. I'm getting pretty passionate yeah, about yeah. that because I'm not going to allow this thing. If yeah. I go to, we, we made that decision when we went through yeah. all this pandemic. We said, if they remember, arrest us. I remember calling you. Yeah. What do you think, Wendell? What should we do? And Wendell said, I'm staying open. <laughs> that's right. We'll go to jail if yeah, we have that's to. Right. We we'll be that. like Paul we went, went, went into yeah. jail, got open. And in. honest to God, we've not been bothered. We've been honored. We've yeah. been celebrated. Meeting yeah. in a casino. Yeah. Meeting and, in a casino. And we did not have one leader say, no, we need to shut our doors and do this. And not one. Everybody. Heard from God, man, and, and it's like, no, you, you, we need to stay open for everyone that needs us to be there. Well, you and know we what's, what's tragic is coming over here today. I heard of a priest who had a woman, a woman, a Caucasian woman pregnant with a one year old child that wouldn't wear a mask who was praying on the altar mm. to get out of her church and call the cops on her and had her escorted out. That is not kingdom stuff. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. But don't you get down on somebody. If you don't like that person want to get close to them, well, you know, all the experts say six feet, and they've been wrong on everything you've said anyway. But but at least you can keep six feet. I'm, I'm just calling it like it is. Uh, you know what? Keep six feet, and that way you'll feel safe. Because yeah. yeah. we let, we're letting the whole church be driven by fear rather than faith. This is tragic, man. It is. When they don't turn in outlaws yeah. and murderers that come into the church, and they turn in a woman... And this is in Texas they did this. Yeah. Today, or this last Sunday, Palm, Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. Yeah. Isn't that tragic? That is. But see, I'm, I'm, I'm calling the prophets to stand up to that yeah, stuff. That's right. Don't rebel. 
try to honor. If they want you to wear a mask, by all means, you can wear a mask. That's what we say here. If you want to wear a mask, you can wear it. So anyway, that's, that's what we call it here. Let's look at the fourth characteristic of prophetic people, which would be mercy. Uh, the fourth character builder, mercy, in the life of a prophet. Okay, mercy is another term for intercession. Hmm. When you have mercy, you'll see the needs of another. See, if you're broken on these other three or four things here that we've talked about, if you're broken on those, you'll have a hard time with mercy. Hmm. Because, and, and especially as a prophet, you get beat up and you kind of get hard. You kind of get defensive. And many leaders, it's not just prophets, it's any leader, you've been sheep bed a lot. Mm -hmm. And and what I call sheep bed, sure. but 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 the bottom line is 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 you got to keep your mercy. And you know what to pray. You keep a good prayer life. Does that mean you, you you see some guys? I used to think there was something wrong with me, and I'd hear guys say, "Well, I go, I, man, I go to my room and I pray for seven or eight hours on my knees. My God, I can pray six or seven minutes and I'm done mm -hmm. on my knees." But when I started to understand when the Scripture says, "Pray without ceasing." That means on my journey as I'm walking, I'm praying all day long, Amen. and I'm listening to the Lord. That's prayer. Amen. Now, there's there's seasons where you do get in the corporate gathering of, sure. of getting on your face and at the altar. But I'm saying, generally, a prophet's just got to keep an open spirit with mercy mm. because you're getting information because of God's mercy. Any prophetic word that you get, you know where it comes from? Mm. The mercy of the throne. Mm. You think about it. Every word you, if you peel it all off, right, right. it's a place of mercy. Yes. Even though it's powerful words where you're going to be, you know, the seven son of seven revelations or the seven <laughs> thunder lightnings of John the Baptist. <laughs> but, but, and there's some people who think that's the way it works. But the truth of it is, it's just mercy is always where a prophetic word comes from. Yeah. So you got to keep a spirit of mercy on you. In other words, intercession, I, I know we're using kind of double terms, but I'm trying to get to, to where we have a practical ability to see. So it's mercy. And um, if you're having a hard time with mercy, get around people who have mercy. Mm -hmm. You know what the problem, a lot of problems where they won't get around people who's real mercy short. Yeah. And that's what keeps you tender. you got to get around. That's why prophets got to have intercessors mm -hmm. because they keep you tender. Not just telling you, well, good job, old yeah. boy. But they keep you tender and, yeah, and hearing sure. the needs of the Lord. You may hear some yourself, but you need to have a prophetic company of mercy showers. Amen. The last one, this is our fifth and final one for tonight, is, is generosity. Listen, if you're not giving, you're not living. Hmm. That's well, an old an old giver used to me. If you're not, he was an old man. He was about 80 years old. I remember him just as clear as a bell, Brother Scott. My son remembers him. He was a little old bitty dude. And I'd see, man, he would give a thousand. This guy was retired. He'd give a thousand. This is 35 years ago. He'd give a thousand dollars. I mean, at least once a month. Mm. And I'm thinking, what? And he'd get a brother. I've learned something in my journey. You can't outgive God. Yeah, now, right. you know, a lot of our culture in those days was about getting nickels and noses. Sure. But the truth of it was, was that he had understood that principle. And honestly, that impacted me. And I'm going to tell you, I've been blessed like I've never been blessed. With everything cut back, amen, my amen. traveling cut down, I've been getting blessed. I can't believe the way I've been blessed. Amen, amen. But I've applied that principle yeah, of generosity. Yeah. Every week I come in, Lord, where do you want me to give today? I mean, I give to the house. Bring your tithes in the storehouse, Scripture says. Mm -hmm. And I know there's lots of arguments. Well, man, we're not under the law. It's not about law. Amen. It's about the spirit of generosity. Amen. The The law is given as a as a foundation to expand on. Hmm. It's not that we just give a tenth. The tenth is to teach you to understand and remind you that it's all God's. Amen. But then when you understand the spirit of generosity, hmm. God starts bringing a blessing to you and you got two choices. God doesn't want you to give everything away either. The, there's so much we can teach in this. Right. We hear people, God wants you poor. Where do you read that in the Word? Right, yeah, Scri nowhere. Scripture says that you nowhere. would prosper yeah. as I prosper. Yeah. And, and uh, so generosity is, is about being able to hear God, to know where to give so that he can give you more to give. Amen. And honest to God, I'm living that now. And I went through a season, I mean, not too far distant to where I lost everything. Mm -hmm. I got sick. I lost everything. I lost all my income. And the, my greatest heartache, and I think it was God really trying to show me how they, uh, the, the heartache I had is I couldn't go buy a cup of coffee. So I got that broke. I couldn't 
get a cup of coffee or buy somebody breakfast. Mm. But man, when I broke through that, I've got a whole new level of giving because that's what God was doing. He was just letting me know I already have the character. Mm. Now I'm going to increase your opportunity. And I'm going to challenge every one of you prophetic people. Start giving. Whoever is speaking into you, give. I give in to the people that have influenced me and blessed me mm. and then people that I don't even know. But Amen. basically I'll give to people that you think don't need it. Come on. Because if you give to people that you think don't need it, probably you, you're getting robbed of a blessing. Mm. So generosity it's just a, I mean, it's the very foundation. I put that last because that's usually the thing we always hold on to our wallets. Yeah, sure. And sure. especially if you've been a leader and they tried to starve you out. I mean, I've had them starve me out. I mean, I, I, I got, I, they cut me off of every resource I had when I was really moving into a new dimension. Hmm. But here's the deal. God wants all these things to start working at us. And, and I want to make a point on, on those five things in a, on a personal testimony. Whenever I started moving in the prophetic, people could hear and, and catch that I'd moved in a new dimension, even though I was pastor and I've been pastor a long time, but I moved in a new dimension. And I started getting these young prophets in my church hmm. and they were very anointed. They, they could tell you what you ate for breakfast last year. Hmm. They were very, very anointed. And the truth was, I was so excited to get prophets in that I just blessed them and began to stir them up. But then I started to recognize they had some real character issues. Mm. And uh, I'm not going to tell you the whole story, but but I, I really get upset when people say, they got to have character. Well, no, I said, all I need is a gift. Because that's where I was out of balance. Because mm -hmm. some people are real gifted. Just because you're gifted, you think that validates your lack of character. Right. But but eventually, we started to see these guys, they started using their prophetic gift to manipulate people. Mm -hmm. They started speaking things to get money out of them. They started trying to manipulate uh, stuff they wanted from them. Mm -hmm. And we started to realize, and I always worked with a, another prophet, and we said, we gotta, we've got to stop this nonsense. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord started really emphasizing the character issue. Yeah, I so I believe the character issue is a very important thing. You may not have it all yet, but you'll get it. Line upon line and precept upon precept. Amen, amen, amen. Good, good stuff, Wendell, on character tonight. That's awesome. Pray us out of here, and we'll see you guys soon. Okay, let me let me just read a little scripture before sure, we sure. pray. Here, Psalms thirty-seven, verse, start with verse one. First four verses: says, Do not fret because of evil doers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. And that's always a challenge of a prophet. Mm. You're doing right, and everybody's telling you you're doing mm. wrong. They usually tell you you're doing just exactly the opposite of what God's saying. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass. There's the promise. Mm. I don't speak that to them, but I know that I can depend on God to reveal. And this has happened just like these prophecies come in, had bad character. Well, when they wouldn't listen to us, God struck them down like grass. Mm. And they couldn't even use their gift for a year until they repented. Wow. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. And that's a prophetic declaration to every person listening to us tonight. And I pray even tonight that though you may be challenged, you're upset with the system, with what's going on in our nation, the political arena, the church arena, I'm praying that you'll delight yourself in the Lord. Come on. That you will receive the desires of your heart. And I'm praying tonight, Amen. I'm prophesying this. As we're building this prophetic, I mean, we got a church full of people that's giving testimony, getting new cars, new houses, mm. getting bills paid off Amen. in the Thank middle you. of the pandemic. Mm. It's been crazy, amazing testimonies. So I'm praying those things will happen Amen. to you, Thank you Lord. and God will give you health and Thank strength you. and let the Thank blessing you. of the Lord be on you when you wake up in the morning when you go through the day and when you sleep at night, that you'll be entertained you, by the Spirit of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll see you next time.